We need a few more, or oh, really one more detail to work out an actual volume here. Let's suppose, let's suppose I give you an equation for the circle, okay? I'm going to call this circle, well, just to make the numbers a little bit um, convenient, Let's call x squared plus y squared equals 16. So even though we're, we've got this 3D business happening, this is still an xy plane. Okay, so that means our intercepts are 4, 4, negative 4, negative 4. Cool. Ralph, did you have a question? Um, I was going to say that um, the shape would look like a, you know, a soccer, soccer stadium. Yeah, kind of. With the yeah, sides yeah, yeah. pulled out of the yeah, and um, some of you have seen, like, some of the train stations we've got, the newer train stations, have, like, overhanging sort of hoods that kind of look like that. And I, knew, I know the new stations, if you've seen the designs for the Northwest, etc., they have a hood that kind of looks like this. It's got those ridges, but anyway. Right. How are we going to work out the volume of this thing? Oops, wrong colour. Just like we've had before, even though it has nothing to do with rotation, I still have an infinite number of infinitesimally thin things that I'm adding up. So all I need to do is work out, well, what's the volume of each of those things, and then integrate over an appropriate domain. So off on the side here, what I want you to draw is one of our similar cross-sections. Now, it is important that they're all similar to each other, because that means as x and y vary, right, all of these cross-sections will basically follow the same kinds of rules. They will get bigger and smaller according to the same kinds of quantities. So draw for me over here a square prism that's going to roughly correspond to this one. So something like this. Okay. Here's one of my square prisms. And I'm interested in, well, what are the dimensions of this thing? Okay. I'll give you the easiest one to start because of the way that I've sliced this across and constructed this. The width of each of my infinitesimally thin prisms runs along which axis? It's the x-axis. So this is a delta x. Do you agree with that? Okay. Now, when I have a look at these distances here, right, keeping in mind that I want everything in regard to x eventually eventually right i look and i say okay well from the center right from the center when i go upwards here right that corresponds to me going upwards here do you see that but of course that's just the y coordinate isn't it? that's the height there okay so this distance here is y but i don't actually want that distance that's only half the distance i want right i actually want it to be 2y right so the width of this Square is 2y. Does that make sense? But of course, it's a square. So that means its height is also 2y. Yes? So therefore, if I label this thing, let's call this area here, this cross-sectional area, let's be really original and call it A. Okay. The area of this cross-section here is just going to be 2y times 2y, which is 4y squared. Okay, I know the cross-sectional area, it's a prism, I know the perpendicular height or the width, to whichever way you want to talk about it. Okay. So now I'm ready, believe it or not, that's all the pieces I need. Okay. I, I'm so confident I can do it quickly, I'm just going to fit it up here. Okay. Say that again. I will in a second. Right. When I put together this volume, okay, I am getting limiting behaviour of delta x approaches zero. Okay. Now, what am I adding up? Luckily for us, in this case, it's very, very convenient in that you can even get this wrong and you'd still get it right. Because it's a circle, if you even chose the wrong boundaries, well, the, the, whichever boundaries you choose are going to be the same. Okay? In this case, in this case, I've got delta x, right? So which values would you choose? Negative 4 to 4, I think, would be the best choice. I will point out, this is also going to clearly be an even function as well. So if you wanted to, you could go from 0 to 4 and then you could double it. That's all fine. Let's just keep it this way for now. What am I adding up here? Um, it's a whole bunch of prisms. No pies. No pies, okay? Uh, no rotations happening, right? I've got this area times this height, right? So I'm just going to write that 4y squared delta x, okay? 
And now, as Mark suggested, I actually want to turn this into an integral. Right? I want to turn this into an integral. That y squared, I want it all in terms of x's, right? So I look over here. Every x and y is on, is on the circumference of this circle, right? So every x and y follows this. Do you remember when we were doing that segment before? You got a bit confused because there was the chord and then there was the equation of the arc. And you're like, well, which one is the x and which one's the y? In this case, it's unambiguous. I'm just going to write y squared as the subject so I can substitute it. And y squared, of course, is? <coughs> Super easy, right? Okay, let's have a go at this. Let's turn this into an integral. I'm going to take out the constant coefficient, 4. Negative 4 to 4. Um, I'm going to say, okay, this is going to be 16 take away x squared dx. And at this point, I am going to say, actually, you know what? You can already read off what the integral of this is, right? Based on this integrand here. And you're like, oh, there's going to be x and stuff. You know what? I should take advantage of the fact that this is an even function. It'll be a lot easier for me. So what am I going to do to do that? Times half. Wait, what? Are you drunk? <laughs> You're thinking of a semicircle, right? That was a bit intense. <laughs> this is an even function. This is an even function. So the integral of an even function on symmetrical boundaries is just double. I uh, doubled before. From 0 to 4, 16 take away. That's going to be a lot easier, isn't it? Right? Because you're going to get back, um, when you evaluate at that zero boundary, it all just comes out in the wash. Okay, I'm ready. Uh, what is the integral? What is the primitive? 16x minus the third x cubed. Okay, you've redeemed yourself. Well done. Uh, <laughs> now, now, when I evaluate this guy, this is very, very simple, right? You've got your 8 at the front. Okay. This looks to me like 64, take away, 64 on 3, take away, 0, take one plus 0, uh, which is, that's going to be 128 on 3 times 8, which I believe is 1024 on 3, and it's a volume. Okay. So, where did it go? So, what have we established? Right, let me move this down because it's important. I'm going to refer to it in a second. Just like before, all we have to do, it sounds crazy, okay? But all we have to do is think about, well, what, what kinds of things are you adding up? That's what you need to know. And then work out its volume. And then add up all of the ones that you need to, okay? Now, what makes this a little more challenging is because unlike um, slices and cylindrical shells, right? This now cracks open, like... There's anything, anything you like, right? So long as you have similar cross sections, right? <laughs> so the number of ways you can create volumes like this becomes much larger. I will point out, the maths is no harder. In fact, I'd argue, sometimes the maths is a lot easier. Like, look at this. It's a lot easier than when you did cylindrical shells in particular. Some of those are hard. Like the integral you get, we had to do, um, we got integration by parts yesterday, right? It's like, oh, that's a bit of a mess. Here, the numbers tend to be quite easy. The hard part is seeing it and working out that bit. Okay, and everyone will look quite different. 